to another video from the Intelligent Auto Channel. Uh, today, I've got something a bit different. It's a 1949 Allard. Uh, now, apparently the vehicle started off life as a... M-Type. M-Type, uh, which was a drophead coupe. Uh, it was found abandoned in a farm, barn, garden. Uh, the body was rotten on it. Uh, and it's had a, a replica of a GA1 body fitted to it. So um, the customer complaint is he's fitted an electric fuel pump to it um, and he'd like the fuel pressure setting on the regulator. So let's uh, crack on and see what we do. So as you can see there, it's got a, a very modern looking uh, fuel pump for the age of the vehicle. So the, the, this fuel pump will, will produce seven PSI. Uh, but the owner has been advised that the regulator needs to be set at 2.5 PSI for the carburetors which are fitted. So we'll take a look at the regulator and take a look at the carbs. So this is the, the engine that's in the vehicle. It's a Ford Flathead V8 as would have been found in a, in a V8 pilot of a similar era in the 40s, 40s and early 50s. Um, the carbs are what is known as 97s, they're basically Stromberg 97s that are fitted. As you can see the carbs look quite new compared to the engine, the engine's recently been rebuilt by a hot rodder. Um, the regulator is up here on the bulkhead uh, and what we're going to do is I'm going to take a measurement of pressure before the regulator and I'm going to take a measurement of pressure after the regulator and then we're using this screw in the middle of the regulator we're going to set the pressure to the desired 2.5 psi. So first of all, as I said, I'm going to take a measurement of pressure from the pump. So this is, this is the fuel line coming from the, the fuel tank, or the fuel pump in front of the fuel tank. And I've teed into this with this uh, fitting here. And I'm using uh, uh, Hubby Tools digital um, pressure gauge set. And we're going to measure the raw fuel pump pressure. So Tim, if you'd like to start it up. So as you see there, we had a maximum of 6.9 PSI and it was running at around about 6.5 PSI. So this fuel pressure needs to be regulated. Um, the problem that goes with, uh, especially carburetors, with uh, excessive fuel pressure is the carburetors have, um, have floats in them, inside the float chamber, and excessive fuel pressure can overcome those floats and you'll end up with fuel leaking out the sides of the carburetors. So thus the need to regulate the pressure. So I'm now connected straight onto the, I'm teed in, should I say, to the fuel pipe between the regulator and the carburetors. So we'll take a measurement of pressure after the regulator. So we'll see what this regulator has actually come from the factory set at. Uh, again, by using the digital gauge. So I'm just going to zoom you in on the gauge and uh, Tim's going to start it up. And as we can see, it's actually running a bit low. It was running at 1.8 PSI at idle, uh, and apparently the carb manufacturer requires 2.5 PSI at, at, at idle. So we're actually going to have to turn the pressure up on this one. So to set this reg up, we need to take off this lock nut on the top here. And I've had to find some imperial spanners. And then what we do is, uh, do we turn the centre of this, Tim, or do we actually turn I, the nut? I think it's the hex. The hex has to be turned. So, so, think so to, to, to so that's increase a, that's pressure... A, that's a, that's a 7 sixteenths. So. Go on, right. sorry. So I think to increase pressure, they're saying... I should have brought the instructions, of course. Ha! Um, that you, it's clockwise to increase the pressure. Now, to me, I would say that is possibly another... That dome nut there is just a cover. A cap, right. I think what we should do is, is crack off this. This right. will be the lock nut, and then we turn the centre with a screwdriver, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a try. So that must be a 7.16. So, so we'll find a 7.16 spanner. Uh, 
There we go. No crap. No, it's not. What the hell size is that? It ain't. Oh, oh. That might even be metric. So that's the lock nut. Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to zoom you in on the gauge again while I adjust this regulator. So again, if you just like to start it. Set at 2.5? Set at 2.5 or there or thereabouts. It seems to be wandering between about 2.47 and 2.52. So I'm happy with that if you're sounds happy good. with that, Tim. That sounds great, man. Yep. Gonna lock off that. Put the dome nut back on. There we go. And then we'll start it up again and just double check this pressure. Final little tweak there just yeah. to make sure it wasn't going slightly over. That's good. Excellent. And that's it, we're sorted. So, modern technology <laughs> to basically set up a, a, a how old is it? 50? It's, it's my age, 72. 72 year old car. <laughs> uh, so, there you go. Um, I hope you found this interesting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass you over to Tim, the owner, he's going to tell you a little bit about the car. Tim. Hi there everyone. This is the old wreck. Um, it's a car, it's a project car I've had um, since 2015. And um, basically it's an Allard trial special. Uh, so it's meant for the really rough and ready um, field -side fields and, and tracks and woods uh, where these cars in their heyday used to compete and they were famous in their day and now there's not that many of them left and what I had recently was just ongoing maintenance of the car I had a, a guy put in a new camshaft in the Ford engine um, and he did a beautiful job and uh, when I've got the car back in I'm running I'm running it in at the moment um, I quickly discovered that with two Stromberg carbs on it uh, it was taking a lot of fuel, a lot more fuel than, uh, than I'd been used to with the old system. So uh, I had an SU uh, pump and a mechanical pump, neither of which were up to the job. So on a recommendation, uh, I came down to Gary's, the diesel doctor of, uh, of some fame, and he knew exactly what to do to actually uh, improve the, uh, the running system that I've got, basically, which is a new facet, um, solid state, fuel pump with a regulator and the regulator it was that had left me completely uh, powerless, hopeless really to actually know what to do. So he knew what to do, he, get, he connected it up as you've seen on the video, he connected it up to the gauges and uh, has got everything exactly as it should be as per factory and uh, my hot rod man's recommendation. Um, so I'm just about to go out on the road now and test the so and so out. So fingers crossed for me and Gary <laughs> and I'll see you maybe again. <laughs> Cheers. So Tim's kindly agreed to take us out for a spin in the old girl. So here we go. Excellent, right? Here we go.
So there we go, just to check to make sure we've got no leaks before Tim gets on his way. I would hate for it to go up in flames. Uh, oh, we've got an extinguisher. <laughs> um, so when, we, when you were driving it there, I take it it must have no synchro on the gearbox, does it? Um, it's it's got a bit of synchro left between second and third. It's only got three yeah. forward gears, yeah. but it's a crash box on first. Right. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, you yeah, have could, to try and do it. I, I'm useless at it. You know. I, I could hear you blipping the throttle in Dublin de clutch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, very interesting. So yeah, that's a. Uh, a first for me, uh, working on something that old. It's much older than me and I'm getting on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Tim. Pleasure. Cheers. Uh, and get down in the comments box and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos on probably more modern stuff than this. Thanks for watching.